Good morning, this is Deepak. I'm still in Jerusalem and uh, leaving tomorrow night for New York and then continuing my public television uh, tour for You Are the Universe, Discovering Your Cosmic Self. In the meanwhile, we are continuing our conversations here and you can also uh, join this conversation, ask questions, give your opinions and let's expand the conversation around the deeper understanding of you are the universe. So today's question is from Jennifer L. And she says, in you are the universe, you state your brain isn't listening to the Beatles, you are. While it is understood that the you listening is the individual consciousness, May it also be said that the atoms which comprise the cells of the brain also embody consciousness and some form of conscious awareness. Do cells embodying the same conscious entity which is embodied in oneself have latent individualization and experience their own universe? Do cells embodying the same conscious entity which is embodied in oneself have latent individualization and experience their own universe? Do they repeat a pattern in a lesser cycle, the same which is experienced by the human being on a higher turn of the spiral? Well, yes and no. Let's examine this uh, in detail. Let's just go back to basics. Number one, there is only one consciousness, period. Number one, there is only one consciousness, period. <clears throat> As uh, Schrodinger said, uh, to divide or multiply consciousness is, uh, <clears throat> is not um, legitimate. You cannot multiply or divide consciousness. So then uh, that's first principle. The second principle is there is only consciousness. There is only consciousness. There's nothing other than consciousness. So this is a very important principle and I would like to explain it. Uh, atoms, cells, the human body, or what we call the universe, are symbolic signatures of consciousness created by consciousness to experience itself. Symbolic signatures. So atoms, particles, galaxies, bodies, animals, trees, plants, Anything that you can give a name to or describe is actually a human construct. Who gave the name? Who invented the name cells? Humans. Who invented the name galaxies? Humans. Who invented the name brain? Humans. Who invented or described what we call atoms, or particles, or waves, human beings. And so human beings named and described modes of knowing and experience in consciousness. They named and described modes of knowing and experience in consciousness. And so atoms, bodies, cells, stars, galaxies, the entire universe is a construct, is a concept invented by humans to explain modes of knowing and experience. They're symbolic signatures of being and being is only one. Now that being that is only one only one appears as innumerable, innumerable knowers. Appears. That doesn't mean it divides itself into innumerable knowers or innumerable modes of knowing 
or innumerable objects known. Interruptia kara maya vilabalas via lobus. Kara maya via lobus asks, is spirit a construct? It's the only thing that's not a construct, okay? Consciousness is the only thing that's not a construct because you need consciousness to come up with constructs, okay? So spirit, consciousness, whatever you want to call it, God, Ein Sof, Brahman, Allah, uh, these are words, but uh, all, um, all these words are still trying to get at something that is ineffable, that is um, uh, unutterable, that is the ground of being in which the construct comes about, the construct, body, mind, universe, cells, stars, galaxies, uh, atoms subatomic particles. Okay, so getting back on track, there's only one consciousness that appears, appears as innumerable knowers, innumerable modes of knowing, and innumerable so-called objects known. But the objects themselves are actually modes of knowing and experience in consciousness, in being. Therefore, Jennifer's question, are cells or atoms or brains to the embody consciousness? The best answer is, there is only consciousness. Embodiment, embodying is a concept. Body itself is a concept. Body itself is a construct for a mode of knowing, mode of experience in being. So who is listening? You are listening. Who is understanding? You are understanding. What is the universe made out of? It's made out of you. You not as a person, because even the person is a process in you. See, when you totally get this, and I hope somebody is getting it out there. Yeah, P.T. Diana Beatrice is getting it. She says presence, yes. You is the presence in which the whole universe arises and subsides as what? Modifications of you in the form of thoughts, feelings, sensations, images, and we then conceptualize them as mind, body, universe. That is only you. And the you and me and the you in you is the same you. And the you and me and the you in you is modifying itself as every name, every form, every phenomenon. That's it. To know this is to be free. To know this is to be creative. To know this is to be love. Frank Weissman says, I get it. Thanks. Okay. So this is, um, I hope, a simple answer. How can we let go of ego, Susan Donahue? Observe it, just watch it. And uh, don't fight it because fighting your ego is the ultimate melodrama of the ego. In silent witnessing of ego, mind, body, universe, and experiencing that in your own being is freedom. Okay, my friend Jordan Flesher, um, Hi, John. Says, if ego and conditioning comes from constructs or constructions, then is spirituality or the quest into truth the process of deconstruction in choiceless awareness? The self-contraction is, is a construct. 
the self the contraction is a construct that seems to have its own timing for how long it's there, then it goes away by itself in witnessing awareness again. The Shiva archetype of deconstructing all constructs. Short answer, Jordan, yes. Ask yourself, who would I be without all constructs? Who would I be without all constructs? Everything that can be named, described as form of phenomena that I have attached myself to, name and form, who or what would I be without all that? And what you would be left with is the original you, the Ein Sof, the Allah, the Brahman, the God that has differentiated into all form and phenomena, all possibilities, infinitely creative, infinitely synchronistic, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, truth, goodness, beauty, harmony, evolution, joy, compassion, equanimity, love, empathy. But these are words. These are words to describe the ineffable ultimate reality, which is you. Formless, but without which there is no form. Phenomenon-less, phenomena-less, but without which there is no phenomena. Um, cannot be perceived, but without which there is no perception. Gina says, original being love, yes, love, but love not as a mere sentiment or not love as a mere emotion, love as um, the ultimate truth at the heart of creation. Marcy Gannon drop back and back and back from perception, get some space from the drama, then space from space from the drama and find you. That's pretty good, Marcy. Um, Gina Rene has printed innumerable dollar signs. So you can see where our consciousness is, Gina, that's okay. You know, we all have to start somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> Sue Gaskell says, love just is. She's absolutely right. Uh, volcanic Alion says, uh, H is equal to prescription. I don't get that, volcanic. Um, okay. So a lot of you are sharing the video. That's great. I appreciate it. Marga Cisneros, I appreciate your sharing the video. Uh, Scott D. Ball says, uh, where does pain end? So um, I'll say, what Rumi said, the cure of pain is in the pain. Go deep into the pain and transcend it. Um, Johnson Hammerill Vanetta, I cannot define it, for to define it is to limit, and that I cannot do. Yes, to define God, to define being is to limit being. We can just say being, awareness, ultimate reality. Claudie Bailey Dodson says, is the universe like a hologram? Yes, the universe is a hologram of our uh, consciousness. Curious, what is your shirt? Well, maybe it's the tree of knowledge. I don't know what it is. It's uh, an icebreaker shirt from New Zealand. Okay, listen, let's not get bogged down with shirts, forms and appearances. We're trying to discover ourselves. The shirt is a distraction. Marcy Gannon, find love on the other side of the pain. Recovery is equal to discovery. Good. 
again the question how do we control the ego you don't you watch it you observe it and in the silent witnessing of it it disappears because it's a ghost Joe Hammond, my nine-year-old is fearful of death. Explain to him that death makes life possible, that experience dies as soon as it is born. The, the distance between past, present and future is less than a nanosecond. It's in fractions of nanoseconds, fractions of nanoseconds. So life is a dream, what we call life is a dream, but it happens in the presence of being, which is timeless and eternal. Victoria asks, Victoria Rao Stata Kos asks, will you be coming to Chicago? Yes, ma'am, I will be coming to Chicago. Will you be writing another book, Lisa and Mark? Yes, my current book uh, is, of course, You Are the Universe Discovering Your Cosmic Self. The next book is going to be called The Healing Self, The Science of Healing with uh, Rudy Tansy. Okay, take care. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.